Zimbabwean President Emerson Mnangagwa says he's ready to retire and hand over the presidency to a new ZANU-PF leader. Mnangagwa made the remarks in Manikaland region Thursday while officially launching a water and bob juice making firm. He said he had no interest in extending his term. VOA Zimbabwe's gift Dube reached ZANU-PF lawmaker Joseph Shuma, who says Mnangagwa is a law-abiding citizen, and as a result, he will be leaving office gracefully. This uh, puts to rest any any uh, speculation whatsoever that could have uh, 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 been uh, uh, circulating uh, from I mean from any corner uh, that probably the, the president wants to undo the constitution and uh, and do what could uh, be termed uh, as unconstitutional. So our president has spoken uh, and uh, he has actually even gone further to explain how we, we do things as ZANU-PF whereby uh, we are going to uh, hold our Congress, as we always do, where a new leader uh, will be elected to, to lead us further. So here we go. Uh, the, the, the eggs are now on some people's faces that they've always wanted to talk bad about our colossal party. ZANU-PF uh, is a party that adheres to its constitution and the constitution of the country. Mr. Chuma, we know that there are some people who want Mr. Mnangakwa to extend his term of office. What is going to happen to this group of people? Are they not going to influence him to change his mind on what he's talking about? Well, if if, if, if some people uh, will appreciate and, uh, and probably envy his works and uh, ask him to stay on, uh, it, will be a bit, it will be a bit difficult uh, in our circumstances uh, because uh, of uh, the details of our constitution, which clearly says that uh, if ever there will be any changes in amendment to the mm-hmm. to the clause of uh, two terms, that kind of change will not benefit the, the, the incumbent, who in this case is our president. It will be difficult to, to, to actually have that. But uh, look, he, he has done very well. His uh, first term was superb. His second term is proving amazing. He's uh, pushing a lot of projects, and uh, the economy definitely is stabilizing and is set to even grow bigger and bigger and faster as well because he has addressed most of the fundamentals of uh, making the economy tick. And that's, uh, you know, the road infrastructure that we see being built all over the country. We see a lot of dams that have been built to to to, to actually secure uh, water availability. And uh, we, we, we saw the expansion in Wange of Unit 6 and 7. So there's a lot that uh, this man has done uh, in his presidency. So it would not be amazing uh, to, to, to find people clamoring for him to, to stay on. But uh, you see, we've got a constitutional issue here that might then uh, become a, a sort of a, a hindrance in that kind of move. That was Joseph Shuma, Zanu PF legislator, speaking with Zimbabwe's second from Zimbabwe's second largest city, Bulawayo, with VOA Zimbabwe's Gibbs Dube. July 20th marks the 55th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. An interactive exhibit at Manhattan's Intrepid Museum reminds the viewers of the nominee of the undertaking and what went into the first moon landing. Evgeny Maslov has the story narrated by Anna Militia fighters have attacked a Chinese-linked mining site in northeastern Democratic Republic of Congo, killing six Chinese nationals and at least two Congolese soldiers, local officials said on Thursday. China condemned the attack, which took place on Wednesday in the Jugu territory in the gold-rich Ituli province. The Jugu administrator Rafin Mapera said it was carried out by the Kodeko militia. It is mainly made up of fighters from the Lendu ethnic group, which they claim to defend. Six Chinese nationals and two Congolese soldiers guarding the site were killed, Mapela said. The Red Cross representative for the Jugu, Dikenar Ernest, said the Kodeko fighters had come across the Chinese digging for gold. They entered their camp, killed six Chinese nationals and three soldiers. The victims were killed with bullets. He said, adding that the cops were taken to the city of Bunia. A spokesperson for the army in the region confirmed the toll and added that a Congolese national and six militia fighters were killed. In Beijing, the Chinese foreign ministry said an attack on 
a Chinese-funded private enterprise led to the death and disappearance of several Chinese citizens. China is in close communication with the RSC authorities in the search for the, those missing ministry, spokesperson Mao Ning told a press briefing. He said, we urge the DRC to pursue and punish the perpetrators in accordance with the law as soon as possible, Mao said, while calling for measures to beef up security and protection for Chinese citizens and enterprises there. Those already in high-risk areas should be evacuated as soon as possible, he said. The main name of the mine and the company were not immediately available. In East Africa, in Eastern Congo mining concessions, many private Chinese operators partner with local license holders, sometimes providing funding and the machinery to operate. They also bring in Chinese workers. Wednesday was the latest deadly militia attack in a region where the violence is linked to long-running competition for influence and rich mineral resources.